All right, so I haven't done one of those in a while. So what's in my stock market portfolio this week? Well, let's start with my RSP. So first of all, I've got some Alta gas that I bought at 14.50, trading at 14.85. So I'm up two and a half percent, but this is a stock that pays around six or seven percent dividends, and it's got potential to go back up to 20. Got Alibaba, of course. I bought at 164, trading at 167, so I'm slightly up two percent. This stock obviously has potential to go to 200, but maybe maybe I'll sell because it looks like it might drop again before it goes back up. And 164 seems to be a little bit expensive compared to its 52-week low. I also got Bank of Nova Scotia that I bought at 71.8, closing at 74.4, so I'm up three percent. Obviously. Great Canadian bank stock pays 4% or 5% dividends and it's got potential to trade around the 80s or 90s. Got dividend 15 split corp 2, bought at 4.5, closing at 4. So this stock doesn't pay dividends yet, but when it does, I'll be getting a very good yield of about 28% per year and I'm down 10% on that stock. Got DFN.TO, so dividend 15 split corp, bought at 7.99, closing at 8.65. I'm up 8% on the stock, but I'm also getting dividends every month, about 15% yield per year. Got Ford, 117 shares that I bought at 9, closing at 8.33, so I'm down 7.4, but I'm getting dividends on that of, of around 6% per year. Got Ford options that I bought at $1.50, closing at 39 cents, so this is a really bad one. I'm down 74%, and they expire at the end of this year, so January 17, 2020. I really need Ford to go above 10 or even $11 before january 2020 or else i lose whatever i invested in it which was about 600 us dollars i've got ftn.to financial 15 split corp bought it at 7.4 closing at 7.92 so i'm up seven percent and it pays dividends every month right now of about i think i'm yielding about 20 percent on this stock right now so this is a stock that i've mentioned in, la in the last video that if you had bought at 3.5 you would be getting 43% dividend yield right now. I've got General Mills that I bought at 41, closing at 44. I'm up 7%. I might get rid of this. It pays dividends of about probably 3 or 4%, but it seems to be at a high right now. Potential doesn't look too good for it. Not too sure, and I'm, I think I want to use the money to buy something else. Honda Motor, I bought at 29.3. It's down to 26.65. I don't know why it's dropping. It's a should be a good company it pays three and a half percent dividends about so i'm down i'm down nine percent on the stock i sh i could probably buy more usually when something drops ten percent i buy more of it if i like it but i don't know why it's dropping I've got l brands here that i bought 100 shares of at 26.2 close at 27.12 so i'm up three percent on the stock but i didn't buy it i didn't buy it to make money on the stock i bought it to sell the call options against it at 27.5 so i collected about 105 dollars by selling the call options at a strike price of 27.5 so come expiry date march 15 if l brands is trading above 27.5 i will get an extra 27.5 minus 26.2 so an extra one one dollar and 30 cents plus the 105 that i already collected and that would be in one month. So this is more of a trade, more than investing. I've got Vodafone as well that I bought at an average price of 21.9, closing at 18.12, I'm down 17%. I should be buying more Vodafone, but I think 118 shares is enough. I've got 2,500 US in it. It pays dividends, 6% about per year, but uh, it's got potential to go back up, of course. Just waiting for that, but it's been a while. Looks like it's going to be a long hold for this one. So in my TFSA, I've got some more dividend 15 split corp 2, 193 shares at about a 4.18. And it closed at 4.03. I'm down 3%. So I bought this one because, because of the potential yield, but it hasn't been paying dividends yet. It paid it twice since I bought it, and then it stopped. So it's, I bought it for the potential yield, so I'm just waiting for, for the dividends to come in. I've got Enbridge that I bought at an average price, I believe, of 48 uh, it's trading at 48.3 it pays around six or seven percent dividends per year got some more ford that i bought at 10.95 closing at 8.33 i'm down close to 24 percent on that but it, it pays six percent dividends per year i've got some more ford options here that's gonna kill me 800 us dollars i bought it at a dollar closing at 39 cents so same thing i needed i needed i need the stock to 
to trade above 10 and a half before January 17, 2020. Facebook, so that's the risk with options. So I've got Facebook here that I bought at 168, closing at 165. I had other Facebook shares in my RSP that I bought at an average price of 140. I sold at 170. I was thinking of selling these ones at 170 as well, but since I bought at 168, I felt like I'll just hold on to them, wait until it goes. These ones I'll sell probably when Facebook creatures 180 or 190. I'm down 1% on that. I've got GE that I bought at 9.1, closing at 10. I'm up 10%, probably get rid of this soon. I've got Hudson's Bay. This is a stock that I bought at 13, but it was transferred over from CIBC. So they transferred it, they transferred it over at the price it was trading at same day. But this is it, this should be 13.5 about. Closing at 7.95, so I'm actually down more than that, of course. I've got Kraft Heinz, same thing. This I bought at an average price of 75, so I'm actually down much more. Not sure if I'm gonna keep, maybe I'll just sell take my loss and try to do something else with it. It pays dividends, so I could just keep for the dividends, about 4%. I've got New York Mortgage Trust that I bought at 6. Point, uh, I don't know, I bought an average price of 6, and this one pays 13% dividends, so this is a stock probably going to keep forever. Orange, I bought at 15.42, at dropped to four, it closed at 14.97, so I'm down 3%. Also pays about 6% dividends. AT&T, I bought at 32, closing at 29.71. I'm down 7%, but it pays about all, but it also pays about 6% dividends per year. And then I've got some Teva Pharmaceuticals. This one I bought for the call options, not for the investment. So I bought 200 shares of Teva Pharmaceuticals at 18.5. It closed at 18.82. So I'm up 1.5% on the stock. But the reason I bought it was to sell call options here. I collected 176, collected $176 on a 3,700 investment. And I also sold it at the $19 strike price. So come March 15, if Teva is trading below 19, I keep the shares and, and I keep the call premiums. If it's trading above 19, I keep the call premiums and I also, I lose my shares, but I, I collect an extra 50 cents on the shares, 19 minus 18.50 that I bought it at. And in my margin account, I've got some Apple, 23 shares at 179, closing at 169, I'm down 5%. I've got AMD that I bought yesterday. I bought 100 shares at 22.97, closing at 22.96, so I'm at par, but I bought it for the call options. I collected $150 on that. So 100 shares at 23, I sold the 23 strike price, so I'm not looking to make any capital gain it, it really just was for the 150 dollars that i collected from the call options or the call premiums so if amd trades above 23 come march 15 i lose my shares but i keep the call premiums if it trades below 23 well i keep the shares and we'll see what happens then I've got activision that's been dropping hard i bought 200 shares at an average price of 44.7 and i collected 391 dollars against the 8940 investment but right now look at activision it dropped all the way down to 39 even but it closed at 40. pre-market today looks a little bit higher I've got bombardier that i bought a thousand shares of at 195 average price closing at two i'm up two percent on the stock but i'm selling call premiums against it call options so i collected about a dollar 70 170 dollars sorry and they expire this week this friday if the stock trades below two dollars i keep everything if it doesn't, if it trades above $2, then my shares might get called away. If I want to keep the shares, I have to buy back the options and then sell back, sell the next month's call option. Got Barclays at about at $8, 200 shares, closing at 8.05, so I'm at par. This one I bought for the call premiums, the call options, but I haven't. Call options aren't very attractive right now, so I'm not selling anything against it right now. Got BMO that I bought at 93, closing at 97 almost. I'm up 4%, pays 4% dividends per year as well. Not sure if I'm going to keep it. Might, I'm not patient for, for this 4% per year. I might sell it to use it to, to buy something else. Bought some Bristol Myers as well. Bought it at 50, closing at 50 as well. But I, I bought it to sell the call option. So I collected $228 on a $5,000 investment at the $50 strike price. So by March 15, if it, Bristol Myers is trading above 50, I lose my shares, but I keep the premium. If it's trading below 50, I keep my shares, I keep the premiums, and I can sell call options again, depending on how much lower it's trading below 50. Got some black zone that I bought at 32, closing at 33.3. .3. 
I'm up 4%, it pays about 6 or 7% dividends. I've got some CI Financial Corp. This I bought for the call premiums, but this was a bad trade. I didn't, I forgot to take into consideration the fees. Collected $80, but half of it is gonna go away into fees if my shares get called away because the stock is trading right now at 18 and it expires this Friday and I sold the $17 strike price. So this is a bad trade. It was my mistake, was, was still in the learning process. And uh, I would have been better off just buying the shares. They pay 4% dividends. Plus I'm, all, I'm, I'm I would be making more from the shares itself than the call premium. So this was a bad trade. I've got Dollarama that I bought at 35, closing at 36. It's been a while. I'm only up 3% pays very little dividends like not even a percent got Groupon that I'm buying for the that I bought for the call premium so I bought at 2.9 it closed at 3.75 so I'm up 30 percent but I've been selling call premiums every month I think this is a third this it expires this Friday it's going to be my third time selling call premiums and I've been making probably three and a half percent every month from that plus I'm up I'm selling the 3.3.5 strike price so if my shares get called away I'll make a 20% or more capital gain from selling the shares because I bought it at 2.9 and my strike price is 3.5. So even though the market price is 3.75, I'm gonna be selling at 3.5 if I let my shares get called away. So I've got Intel as well that I bought at 46, closing at 48.77. I'm up 6%, but I sold call options against it at a $48 strike price, so a $2 difference but I collected $75 for that. Got JP Morgan Chase that I bought at 103, closing at 100, I'm down 2%, pays dividends about 3%. Kraft Heinz that I bought at 50, closing at 47, I'm down 5%, but pays about four or 5% dividends. Got Macy's that I bought at 25.82, closing at 25, so I'm down 3%, but I sold the 27 strike price, so an extra, an extra dollar and 20 cent capital gain potential, but I collected $86 against that. So most likely, my options will expire worthless so i don't have to buy them back i will keep the shares for sure by for on come friday because they expire this friday and i have the choice to sell more call premiums or more call options again uh, next month i think 86 dollars on 25 82 is about two percent 86 divided by 25 82 yeah three and a half made three percent last month on macy's and could probably make another 3% this month come Friday. Morgan Stanley, same thing. I bought 100 shares at 40.4, closing at 40.2. But I sold the 41 strike price. I sold call premiums collecting 100, collecting $103. Micron, you most likely know my story with Micron. Bought 100 shares at 33.74. And then this, the stock just went, went to 41. So totally regret selling call premiums against it because it limited my upside because I sold at a 36 strike price. I collected $99 against that, but I'm stuck at 36. I can't take advantage of the 38 and 41 um, price of the stock. So my max, my max capital gain or my max profit is 36 minus 33.74 plus the 99 cents. So it's about, it's about 10% in one month. Nvidia, I bought at 143 average price, trading at 146. I was actually thinking of, I've got two choices. I was thinking of getting rid of it or buying the difference, buying more shares to have 100 shares of it and then sell call premiums against it because, call options against it, sorry, because they're, the call premiums are pretty high for Nvidia. But that would mean that I would have $14,000 in Nvidia. I'm not sure if I want to do that. I've got Qualcomm that I bought at 52. Average price closing at 50.83. I'm down 2.5, pays about 5% dividends per year. Got Snapchat, 200 shares at 5.84, closing at nine, I'm up 53%, but that doesn't concern me because I sold call premiums against it, limiting my potential upside. So the most I can make is $378 plus $1.15 per share because I sold the $7 strike price as you can see here. So 7 minus 5.84 plus 3.78 is the max I can make and that's in a two-year period as well because I chose the January 15, 2021 expiry date. So this was also not the best trade and it's part of the learning curve. So Twitter, I bought 100 shares at 30.5, closing at 30.2, sold the 31 strike price, collecting $164 and if my shares get called away on March 15 I'd make an extra 50 cents per share but Twitter has to be trading above 31 for that to happen got some vermilion energy 61 shares at 32.5 closing at 31.4 
collecting about 8% or 9% dividends on this one. I'm down 3%. We've got United States Steel, about 100 shares of at 21.81, closing at 22.5. So I'm up 3% on the stock, but I'm doing it actually to sell the call option. So collected $97, expiring March 15. We'll see what happens come March 15 if I'll let my shares get called away at 22 or sell some more call premiums. I've got ExxonMobil that I bought at 75, closing at 74. Pays about 5% dividends, but I'm down 1%. So might get rid of this one because it's not doing much. It's not. It's been a while, it's not moving. And might use the money to buy something else, we'll see. So I'll make another video talking about my strategy for 2019, my investment strategy for 2019. You, you probably would have guessed it just by looking at my trades, but I'll make another video explaining why I'm going with this investment strategy for 2019. All right, so if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below. Like always, if you're going to open an account with Questrade to trade on the stock market, use my referral code in the description below the video to get between $25 and $250 back, depending on your deposit. Also, check out the other referral links in the description below to help support the channel. Thanks for watching.